My husband, male, 32, started working a new job recently and he must wake up two hours earlier than me. He complained about me not being awake to make breakfast for him. When I suggested he do it himself, he said he couldn't find the time and had no experience in cooking. He begged me to wake up with him and make him breakfast, but I refused. I work a highly demanding job, plus four months pregnant, and I need all the sleep I can get. He tried everything from begging to demanding to even using outside support, aka his mom, to pressure me into caving in, but I still put my foot down on this. In the past few days, I noticed a pattern of him making up emergencies to wake me up and then have me make breakfast since I'm awake anyway. It happened twice. The third time was yesterday. I was asleep and he woke me up screaming that there was a fire in the kitchen. I instantly jumped from the bed and started running around like crazy. I checked the kitchen and there was no fire. He came in laughing, saying he just did this to trick me to have me right where he wanted me, and that is the kitchen. I was shocked, especially when he so casually told me to start preparing his breakfast. I felt so awful I let loose on him. I went off on him like I never did before, leaving him standing there staring in shock. I went back to bed and he came after me, saying that I was controlling and selfish to deny him food and then yell at him for it. I ignored him and he left for work but didn't call or text. His mom did though and she had nothing nice to say. As a matter of fact, she said that with this attitude, she won't be surprised when she hears that I'm yelling at her grandchild for wanting to eat. She then listed all my duties, which included making breakfast for my hard-working husband and not raising my voice with him, much less going off on him. My husband resumed the silent treatment after coming home, implying I hurt his feelings. Am I the idiot for my reaction? Did I overreact? So, if his constant fake emergencies put you and your child at risk, he doesn't care? That sort of acute stress on you that your house will burn down and you can die is fun for him? Not the idiot, but maybe you want to talk to your family and friends about this and see if you wish to stay married to someone who cares about you so little. Of course, after you have the kid, he's probably not going to lift a finger to help since that's the woman's job. He's a grown man who can make his breakfast or grab a granola bar as a snack. If anything, he should be making you breakfast because you're pregnant right now. So the next time he wakes you up over an emergency, immediately dial 911 in front of him and tell the police that you're pregnant. Your husband has accidentally caused the emergency that he woke you up over. Then let him deal with the police. Your husband is acting like Peter from Peter and the Wolf. If he's going to be making up stories like this, don't believe him until he's given you evidence that he needs to be believed. He told his mommy on you. He's lying to his pregnant wife to make her get up entirely too early, and when you call him out, he tells his mommy that you hurt his feelings. Let me guess, he was always mommy's special boy, and hoped to find a wife someday who would be a replacement mom. I'm guessing mother-in-law never taught him to cook because that was clearly women's work. But if he can't heat up a packet of instant oatmeal, he's not competent enough to raise a child or be married. So get rid of him before the baby arrives or you're going to have two infants to care for. When I, 23 female, was 10 years old, my parents divorced. My dad was so mean in how he spoke to my mom. He always made her do all the housework and difficult parenting, but would swoop in to be the fun parent and apologize to my siblings and me for her behavior. If I'm honest, I believed everything he said about my mom for a while and I hated her for years. I still feel so guilty about it too. My dad's friend was my mother's boss at the time of their separation. I don't know if my dad got mom fired, but I assume he did because she lost a job the day after she left him. He made more money than she did, his name was on the house, and he knew she didn't have the resources to dispute him in court for very long, so he drew the process out for as long as possible until my mom ended up homeless and living in her car. She lost custody of all three of us and had to move to another state to stay with her sister because she couldn't find work without an address. He cut her off from us and we didn't talk for years. As soon as my mom was gone, my dad began treating me the way he treated her. It was a total switch from the man I'd grown up with and suddenly it was like he hated me. It took that 180 degree turn for me to realize what had happened between him and my mom. I pieced together everything over the next few years and went through some documents from the divorce that confirmed what I suspected. By the time I was 16, I had started saving money to move out as soon as possible, and at midnight on my 18th, I took my things and left. I later reconnected with my mom, too. I've done pretty well for myself after leaving. I have a job, an apartment, and a baby. I'm happy with my life. 
My sister contacted me a few days ago. She just turned 18 and she wanted to see me. We met at a park and talked for a while. When she asked why I left, I tried to lie and come up with better answers, but she kept pressing, so I told her the truth, all of it, not sparing the details. She didn't respond well to it. She told me our dad would never have done those things, that our mom was the problem. She said she didn't believe me about any of it, storming off. I told our mom what happened and she said I shouldn't have told my sister. She thinks it wasn't fair of me to shatter her reality like that because she's just a kid and our dad is still her hero. I know what it's like to have that reality-shattering moment and it sucks, but I mean, she asked for the truth. Was I wrong to give it to her? Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. She insisted that you tell her the real reason why you left. She is technically an adult. She should have expected the answer to be unpleasant because why would you have left the minute you could otherwise? From what I understand, my dad told her and my younger brother that he and I disagreed about something and the whole thing was just a big misunderstanding, so she wasn't expecting my actual answer. So she believed an 18-year-old would leave home because of a simple misunderstanding. Why would her dad, who she thinks is a hero, allow a simple misunderstanding to permanently damage his relationship with his daughter? He's incredibly manipulative. As long as you said factual things you could share, you did nothing wrong. Your mother is wrong, but not an idiot. I imagine what she went through is traumatic and probably colors how you should handle things. By the way, I understand and appreciate why you feel guilty for believing your father. However, you were an actual kid being manipulated by your father. That doesn't make things better for how your mother might feel, but it wasn't your fault. Also, your dad was abusive to your mom and later became abusive toward you. So even though your sister may not have had it as hard as you have, it's best for her to be warned about her father's abusive personality in case he eventually decides to turn against her. How is your mom doing? My gosh, I hope she's more than all right, same as you. She's doing great. She went back to school and got a degree, and now she's got a really good paying job in a house she owns. I'm so proud of her. He took everything from her, and despite that, she still managed to survive and thrive years later. I'm in awe of how strong she is, honestly. My stepdaughter is a tween. I, 30 female, have diabetes and other food allergies that prevent me from eating a wide variety of foods purchased for consumption in this household. The food, snacks, drinks that I can eat usually tend to be more expensive and I have to spend way too much time shopping for bargains to eat. My stepdaughter is fully aware that these are the only things I can eat and we had no problems up until roughly six months ago. I've been in her life for eight years, so yes, this is a new behavior. So my favorite food and drink are burritos and diet Sprite. I can't have either of them due to my allergies and it took me forever to find a brand that I could have. But I don't get them often because both of these products are way too expensive. $19 for an 8-pack burrito and $12 for a 6-pack of the Sprite knockoff. Maybe once every three months or so. I caught my stepdaughter eating and drinking both multiple times and had to sit her down and tell her that I didn't want her eating those, as they were expensive and for me specifically, and offered to buy her regular brand of the same items. She said yes, so I went out and bought them for her, to find that she was still eating mine and not touching hers. I asked her why several times and she shrugged her shoulders and walked off or said, I don't see why it's a big deal, it's just food, and rolled her eyes. So I told my husband to do something about it because he knows my dietary restrictions very well and knows how important that is and how much I love those specific items and can't have them often. So he spoke to her and everything after that seemed fine. However, I just bought the burritos and knock off organic Sprite again yesterday. I went to get some around 10pm when my daughter was supposed to be in bed. Unfortunately, the entire litre was gone. I couldn't find it anywhere. So I go into my stepdaughter's room and she's sitting with not only the Sprite in her lap but two burritos as well. This was when I noticed everything else. My green tea sitting on the floor was gone. The meal containers that I'd packed for work under her bed and on her dresser. I thought I was going mental because I couldn't find them anywhere and it turns out that she's been eating them. I've gone many days at work without food because of this. So I told her I've never been so absolutely disappointed and repulsed that someone could lack that much respect and empathy for another individual and walked out. I woke my husband. He went down and saw everything but came up and started screaming at me because apparently I made his kid cry and now he's worried about her developing anxiety about eating. Am I the idiot?
Not the idiot at all. How dare your husband yell at you when you're being left with no food? You bought her snacks and she's still eating yours. Time to get a refrigerator with a padlock on it for the garage. She seems to have targeted your food for whatever reason and it will not stop with just talk. While your husband may be worried about her developing anxiety, I think you guys both missed the boat. Something happened. What you are describing is not normal behavior. This is family therapy time. Something is up with a kid hoarding food, especially just your food. No need to put up with it, but it sounds like you'll need a therapist to work with her. This. Grabbing the wrong soda repeatedly is willful obstinance. Taking all the food that the OP can eat, leaving her with very little else, is disturbing. No, it's not going to kill OP to go without a diet soda or a frozen burrito, but that's not the point. She literally cannot have everyday foods to maintain her health. And she's going through the trouble of making herself meals to sustain her blood sugar levels, but her stepdaughter is stealing that food. Something is going on with this child. I hope the issues can be resolved. I have a tween daughter with my ex. When she was younger, we had 50-50 custody, but when she started school, we couldn't do that anymore. We live in two different cities, so we changed it. We let her choose who she wanted to live with, and she chose me. We decided that she could stay with me most of the time and stay with my ex in the summer and one weekend a month. A year ago, she told us that she doesn't want to spend summers with her mom and asked to spend summers with me. It saddened her mom, but she agreed only to have her one weekend a month. The issue here is that recently she told me she doesn't want to spend that weekend with her either. The reason is that our families are very different. My family is very well off and she is the only kid in our family, so she is the centre of attention. My siblings love to buy her gifts and spend time with her and she has a very comfortable life. Her mom's family, however, is full of kids. She has two half-siblings and about 15 or 20 cousins and everyone is too busy with their own kids. Her mom can't take her on summer vacations and if she does, they usually do activities for toddlers because of her half-siblings, which is why she didn't want to go there in summer. Also, she complains about her mom always being busy and the food being bad. I told her that I understood, but she is her mom, so she has to make some effort. She can't stop seeing her mom just like this. This weekend, she was supposed to be at her mom's and I had to force her to go there because she locked herself in the bathroom. I don't think I'm an idiot, but my entire family thinks I'm horrible. Not the idiot. It sounds like your daughter is being a spoiled brat and the only reason she doesn't want to go is that she's not the center of attention. She only wants to be with you for attention and gifts. Your entire family is wrong. You are doing right by your daughter by having her spend time with her mom. One weekend a month isn't much time at all. I strongly disagree with everyone calling her spoiled. Her mom started a new family and has two younger kids. When she goes there, all the activities are catered for her siblings rather than her, and I'm sure they get most of her mom's attention too. Additionally, most of her life is pretty quiet and peaceful given that she's the only child. Going from that to a summer full of screaming kids is a shock to the system and can be overwhelming, so I don't blame her for not wanting to go. I think you need to have a conversation with your ex. Your daughter probably feels neglected when she goes there like she's not as important as her mom's new kids. Her mom should find a way to have special mother and daughter time when her daughter visits. My son recently played in his first varsity football game, American football. He plays the offensive line and to be frank, the game did not go well for him. The guy he was going against beat him most of the time. My son has always been naturally a bigger, stronger kid and so hasn't put that much effort into working out or improving because he hasn't needed to since he's just been able to outmuscle people his age. But now that he's on varsity and the other players are big and strong, he just got outclassed. After the game, he was obviously upset and bummed, and I just let him sulk and didn't really discuss much with him. But the next day, he was still mad and started saying that the other player was being cheap or that the refs were missing calls, etc. At that point, I stopped him and said, No, they weren't. Nothing they did was a cheap shot. You just flat out got beat. Last night, they played better than you did. That's just the reality. If you don't want that to happen again, then you need to work to get better. My son did not like that response and is currently not talking with me. My wife has said I was too harsh by saying the other player was better, but I think I was just being honest about what happened. So, am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Don't worry. He's just nursing his wounded ego. He'll get over it. You were right to tell it like it is. 
At some point in life, you need to teach your kids to take accountability for things, and you did it at the right moment. He's old enough to understand this, and catering to his arrogance would only have created problems for him in the future. I'd say you are the idiot. While I understand your thought process, he needed comfort, not confrontation. He needs to know it's okay to lose, and that doesn't mean he was terrible or played badly. It means the other players may be more experienced, have worked hard to get really good, and that a lot of people in sports like this are the big, strong kids like him, so it's harder to win now. There's a way to teach him sportsmanship, but this isn't how you do it. Giving feedback is the coach's job, not the parents'.